All right, Big Dan. Carlos Thomas Jr. is out of the New York Pro. I spoke to him this morning. Apparently, he had some kind of gut issues. I don't know what kind of gut issues. You're you're like said, the... Well, he said that he had ulcerative colitis. And what is that? Um, I believe it's swelling of the intestine. And, uh, let's see. Wow, really? Swelling of the intestine? I know he's got to be disappointed because... Yeah, it's inflammatory bowel disease. It's just another name for it. So, yeah. yeah. Swelling, swelling of your small and large intestine. Wow. Is it painful or how the hell does something like that happen? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I honestly, I, I, I've never gotten checked out, but it, that that's very common. I mean, I, I have trouble at, at this point. I have a broken ankle, so I'm kind of in the same boat as Carlos. I was, but I was sat out for longer and, and I'm eating like once a day right now. Oh, I just have no appetite. I wake up feeling nauseous. Well, we, we, me and Carlos, I think we've talked about it on this show before. Right. Um, how we had that problem. And he said that, that he used the BPC-157, and that helped him a lot. Well, what's actually, that? Uh, it's body protection compound number 157. It's a peptide. It's made from uh, human gastric juices. Okay. And um, it actually – I've been using it for my ankle, uh, but I actually have been noticing a difference in my uh, gut health. I feel like I'm I'm having a lot better of an appetite. But oh, that's I, good. I remembered Carlos was – was saying that he used it for that specifically. So he's got to yeah. be really disappointed because um, he's been really looking forward to making his pro debut. And it was, he, I mean, he shut down his Instagram. He didn't come on the podcast. He shut down everything to prepare for it. So, you know, it has to be significant for him to pull out. If it was something small, he wouldn't have did it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, um, I mean, he was definitely the front runner. Yeah, everybody was talking about him winning. It was like basically his show to win. It's his show to um, win. How long do you think he's going to be out for? I don't know. Um, I I don't think I don't think uh, I don't think he'd be out that long. I mean, you know, it's it's a thing like when when we're pushing all that food into our stomach, it's going to cause problems, you know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it does, you know, and and I guess it's just how you deal with it, and and you know, I I don't I don't know to speculate but you know maybe he wasn't able to get food down and and so at a certain point you know if you're not able to get food down then you're cutting weight you're you're cutting trying to get leaner and it's like wh where do you pull food from i mean i have right. clients that, that have that problem you know that they can't get their food down in the off season and then pre-contest it's like where do you where do you go how do you even pull more food because they're barely eating anything Right, right, right. So, right, right. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't really know the treatment plan for something like that. I, I've never never looked into it. The f I, I've always just kind of, I, if I, I, like I get nauseous, I just kind of force the food down or, or yes. uh, blend it in, in a shake. Yeah. I just hope that, um, <clears throat> I hope that uh, physically he's fine, but I hope mentally it was, he's fine because I know he was having – he was really looking forward and really pushing hard for this uh, pro debut. I just hope he's okay. I mean, I'm sure he'll be fine. It's yeah. not like he, he's a strong dude. And I'm sure he will do a show later on in the year. I mean, there's plenty of shows to jump into. You know, there's Toronto, there's Cali, there's, I mean, you know, Chicago. There's a gazillion shows to do. And I don't think, I don't think many people are doing Toronto. I think the only one doing Toronto is Ian Valier. But I don't know how long he's going to be you know, not going to be able to prep for, you know, he might, he might need a month or two. I don't really know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, totally. Um, and the, the other part is now who do you pick? Yeah. Um, good question. That's a good uh, question. The thing is though. I, I mean, Stu looked pretty competitive. Um, I mean, Nate looks crazy. I, Nate, yeah. I, I, I'm going to pick Nate, but I, you know, the, the thing is I only know I've only seen up close and personal Nate and Stu. Yeah. Right. The other guy is like Eric Wood, and uh, Eric Wood looks good, but his legs are a little downsized. Um, all the guys that we've that we've looked at that what was about two weeks ago when Stu was on. Uh, I I I'm gonna... was on against Hunter. Did you see that? Yeah, from the front though. Yeah, that's true. From the front, from the back, I don't know if Stu could hold his own against Hunter from the back. Yeah. You know, I think that's probably a little, but then again, you know, we didn't see his back. I don't know. Yeah. No, I, but, yeah. But, but Nate, you know, Nate is going to come in chiseled. 
that's his yeah and he looks he looks a lot bigger too than than i've ever seen him yeah he's like 254 he weighed in today or yesterday or something like that saw that yeah. right. and you know he's going to come in chisel his what's his only drawback his only drawback is really his hamstrings that's about it for pretty much everything else he's got small waist great v taper plenty of muscle grainy muscle sweeping quads his only thing is maybe his hamstrings that's about it yep. but i'd have to pick him but then again, we've seen guys come out of nowhere. Yeah. You know, we've seen guys, we've seen this all the time when guys come out of nowhere. But we're going to be talking about it tomorrow on MD because Phil Klahar is going to join us. Oh, yeah. Tomorrow, yeah. yeah. Tomorrow on MD, which should be interesting. Ryan can't uh can't join us again tomorrow. So I told him to reach out when he can. Yeah. And uh, it should be pretty interesting because we're going to be talking about the New York Pro and Phil take Phil's take. And uh, we'll go from there. But yeah. All right, so let's get into Anabolic Academy and the questions. We got a bunch of questions. So let's see. I'm going to start off with, okay, this is a friend of mine, Billy. He actually messaged me this question. He wants to know, what is the quickest and best way to get shredded? You know, do you pull the carbs? Do you pull the water? Do you, you know, as far as your diet goes, do you rotate carbs? What's the best way as and the shortest amount of time that's what he wants to know because that's what everybody wants to know when the summer comes yeah. is coming you know um yeah i mean i I, w- I would say pull carbs and do like a moderate fat high protein kind of diet yeah yeah why why moderate fats because i did this happened to me once before where i i was taking in too many fats mm-hmm. lowering the carbs i was taking in too many fats and i couldn't Drop the weight that I wanted to. Yeah, right? well, fats, fats, nine calories per gram, and and carbs and protein are four. Okay, so I was so just take, it's take, a lot taking taking it more dense. Ah, I see. Okay, yeah. okay. All right. Yeah, so that would be probably be it. Uh, pull your carbs, like you said, moderate fats. Keep your protein high. You know, he's a relatively lean guy. So he could probably get away some with some red meat, not have to do just yeah, you know, fish and, and whatnot. Yeah, right. Um, and uh, you know, you got to kick in the cardio. You know, uh, yeah, exactly. In the morning on an empty stomach, or right after your weight train. You know. Uh, let's see. Okay, next, next question: the best PCT cycle. I mean, I'll tell you what I do um, every year. I usually do uh, a month of Clomid, six weeks of HCG, um, and that's really it. I usually do a six-week PCT cycle of those two. But what do you think? Yeah, I mean, there's really only one. It's Clomid, um, HCG, and then um, a um, – Novadex, right? Yeah, no, or a, a, ser- a, ser- a serum, a raloxifene, is, is, I think is a better one. But, um, yeah. And, re- and yeah. replace of – Novadex. Uh okay. Relax. Why? Why yeah. the anti-estrogen during well, the PCT? It's a cycle? term, so it's a, it's a selective estrogen receptor modulator. So it only blocks the receptor. It doesn't block the aromatization because at that point you're not uh, uh, the aromatization is is a conversion of testosterone to estrogen. At that point you're not taking exogenous testosterone, so nothing is converting to estrogen. So if you were ah. to take, if you were to take an AI then that's going to do nothing because okay. that's the, the AI prevents the conversion from um, testosterone to estrogen, but uh, a serum blocks a receptor. So even if there's estrogen created, it, it just doesn't bind to the receptors. Ah, uh, I see. Okay. Okay. Best way to clean out. I think we just answered that question. And when I say clean out, I'm assuming you know, an eight week period of coming off a, a cycle or a 12 week period of coming off a cycle. And I think yeah, we just, I, I, that I question. don't think, yeah, I don't think that's really necessary, honestly. Go ahead. Um, I think if you go to a, 125 milligrams of test a week um, versus, you know, running a PCT, you're not really going to gain anything from running the PCT unless <laughs> you're very new. Now, let me, let me um, ask you this. Now, I don't know if this is just me. This is just a personal experience or if this happens. 
when I do, uh, when I do my cycle, I usually use anywhere from 750 milligrams to a thousand milligrams a week. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then when I first do it, my sex drive is through the roof. Yeah. And then it kind of, it doesn't, it never drops because I'm taking in enough testosterone, but it, it, it never drops to the point where I'm not sexually active. If, if that makes sense, but it does, yeah. it does, it does seem to drop. And yeah. then, and then when I come off and I jump on HCG, I mean, like when a day or two, I just, bam, it just yeah. jumps right back up. Yeah. So, so taking HCG while you're on a cycle, um can help with that okay just, okay. just take less take it uh, you know probably three times a week oh okay so I would, three times a week or something uh, and that, i would that usually use 30 units i would usually use 30 30 units a day yeah so you use less than that you just use three times a week and and that will um that'll help with that oh okay all right very cool yeah. that's yeah and a lot of guys like if they're on a cycle for a long time like that'll be kind of like their bridge, like before they go on to the next cycle, they'll just stay on high drugs and then they'll just add a little HCG and then continue the high drugs. Yeah, that's what I do. I usually maybe do HCG for about two weeks and then I usually going to go back to testosterone, but I usually change the anabolic. Like I don't use, like right. if I'm using Decker, I'll go to EQ or I'll go to yeah. Tran or Amastron or something like that. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> yeah, but this would be like what you're on the whole time. I say okay. You're on you're on high amounts the whole time. You're not like lowering your dose. Right, 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 right. right. So that's yeah, yeah. We're talking about uh, the same. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Next question. Trend tablets. I I have seen trend tablets. <clears throat> Excuse me. Twice in my life. I never used them. Um, who made them? Dragon, Dragon Farmer? If that yeah, if that's so, still around, it's not like a trend tablet. It's it's a totally different drug. It's methylated. Okay. It's methylated trembolone. So okay, it's significantly stronger than trembolone. Really, it's more liver toxic. Oh god, it'd be like in the in the ballpark of like a halo test, and if not worse, I, it's def, I would probably put it put it a, a, a lot worse than halo test on, on the liver. Is it something that you would recommend or? Never. Yeah, never. Huh? Never. Even though the liver could take a beating. Yeah, it can, but I mean, it's just not worth it. Yeah, it's just not worth it. I mean, the only, the only, the only time I would say go with it is maybe like if you don't respond well to halo, like you don't pre-contest, you don't want to use halo testing. And I use mm-hmm. Supertrol usually. I don't use halo testing, but that would be another one you could probably use in place of. But then you're gonna deal with high prolactin probably so you're gonna mm. have to take more caber so you're yeah. gonna have to take more what caber because you'd be you'd be pairing that on top of the trembolone that ah, you take see, injectable because right, it pre-contest right, right. but yeah I maybe I don't know, maybe if you're maybe if you're not taking trembolone pre-contest you're taking mastrone and and you're not taking halo the last few weeks mm. maybe you that in but mm. uh, yeah I, I wouldn't have really so yeah say. yeah um <clears throat> orals in general <clears throat> unless you're competing if you're going to be you know you kind of just want to get in shape and look good on the beach or <clears throat> i would stay away from orals what's the point yeah, i, I mean you, you could do injectable testosterone with eq and or you know you know if you really want to use trend trend whatever and if you if you clean up your diet do your cardio train hard you're going to get you know really good results yeah, a yeah. lot of people, I don't think they want to inject themselves. That's what happens. That's what it is. They just go, oh, you know, I don't like injecting myself. But, you know, uh, then I don't know what to tell you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do something. Find, find another hobby. Seriously, like, you know, to play chess or something. I don't, you know. Yeah. I don't think uh, anyone likes injecting themselves, though. Man, really, again? No one likes it. I mean, everyone hates injecting. You just get, yeah, you just, you just get That's used enough. to it, you know? You just get used to it. Like, um, I mean, the growth is so easy. I mean, it's just an insulin. Yeah, thing. that's it's nothing. And you just get used to it. It's. Uh, yeah. I remember the first time I used to have a friend do it when we were kids. We were like, you know, twenty. Yeah, me too. When I was like, <clears throat> and then I remember I was like, why can't I just fucking do it myself? And I just did it myself. Yeah. You know. And then I I came off everything for about 
five years. I didn't touch anything. Shit. Cause I, yeah, because I was with a girl, and it was in my twenties, and we were we were engaged. And she was like, you know, I don't want you doing steroids. So I was like, all right, you know. Oh my god. <clears throat> and then as soon as I broke up with her, it was like that week. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Um, all right. Say again. I've been there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she was Listen. not. She was not like a a manipulative, controlling girl. She was just very traditional. Yeah. Like she came from a, a good Italian background and, you know, she really just wanted to have children and have family. And, and, and it turned out that's what I wanted. I just needed longer to dick around in my life <clears throat> to fucking realize that's what I wanted. Yeah. It was unbelievable. Anyway. <laughs> All right. Next question. Uh, this person is not using GH, but he wants to know if he uses insulin without using GH to bring up lagging body parts. What do you think? I mean, uh, I don't think it's a great idea, honestly, unless you're like very, very lean, like your body type is someone who's like very lean and can't put on weight at all. Mm -hmm. Then I would say, okay, but unless, unless I think, I think it's just going to put on excess fat, honestly. Yeah. I don't think using insulin, you know, it, it's, it's almost like you're jumping in the deep end of the pool without learning how to swim. Right. I mean. Yeah. In my estimation, I know that seems to be the last drug people tangle with, even though research shows, and you have said plenty of times, that insulin is is relatively safe if used if used right. Yeah, well, I mean, he was talking about four to six units. I mean, you could go to sleep if you take that much. I mean, m most people, I mean, they're not taking like 12 to 15 units. Like, yeah, like, you know, they're taking like four to six or mm -hmm. something like that. I mean, if you're taking that little amount, I mean... Well, you, you only need to eat like a banana or something to really cover the. Would that at, would that actually be significant to put muscle on? No. Yeah, I didn't think so. No. So what's you know, look? Here's another thing that I've run into a lot. I run into a lot. The guys that want to go on a cycle, but they're so cautious that they do next to nothing. Yeah, you know? yeah I know, I know. Yeah, I know. I agree. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's like they're taking like a hundred milligrams of test. I'm like, dude, you just shut your body's natural, natural. production. Down That's all you're doing. Yeah, it's for, worthless. For 100, like what? And, you, and yeah. you're taking less than it would have, probably less than it would have created. Yeah, I have a friend that was like, uh, you know, asking my opinion. And he's like, you know, I'm doing, <clears throat> I'm doing a cycle. I was like, all right, what are you doing? He goes, I'm doing 250 milligrams of uh, testosterone a week and 300 milligrams of uh, EQ a week. <laughs> And I'm like, and I'm like, and you know, he he's not well versed. And I'm like, dude, you gotta double that. Yeah. I mean, that, and, and he thinks I'm crazy. You know, he's like, you know, 600 milligrams of EQ a week. I'm like, that's standard. That's yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I yeah, 600 at least. Yeah. Yeah. I always would do a 600 EQ or 600 of, um, of what do you call it? Deca. Yeah. Of Deca. Yeah. Those are, I always Not prefer, I, I always prefer Deca, especially at, Especially as I'm getting older, because as I'm getting older, like even when I'm warming up, like today I did back, right? And even when I'm warming up and I'm doing some pull-ups, like I'm not using any DECA. All I'm using right now is testosterone growth. And even when I start warming up, like I'm doing pull-ups, I, I feel stiff and I feel a little bit of pain in my joints, in my shoulders, and my lower back, just from doing some pull-ups. And I have to do one, two, three, sometimes four warm-up sets just to like, kind of like break through that and be able to get into my workout. But with Deca, it's significant. It significantly helps in that, uh, you know, in, in that way. So I, yeah, always I, prefer, think, yeah. I think it's way more powerful. I mean, yeah, I, I really use it for, for like, you know, strain on the joints and whatnot. Yeah. And that seems to be the goal. But the goal. I, I mean, I think like, I, I, I honestly, if I were to like compare the two, I mean, 600 milligrams a deca would be more like a thousand milligrams of EQ. Ah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. You know, I, think, I, think I, it's, I never cool. got, I never got a lot of good results from EQ. Sometimes I just use it to break it up because I was using deca for eight weeks and, you know, and I'm like, let me break it up and I'll use EQ. I've never got good results from EQ. I don't know if it's just me, but then I've have friends that absolutely love it. Yeah, I, I've heard the same thing. Yeah, people they say it helps with their appetite, and I, 
I, I take yeah. it. It does nothing for it literally does nothing for me. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. You know, I um, I think I think the real benefit of it is like with endurance athletes. Oh really? Oh, because yeah, of the you know, it raises your red blood cell count and, and okay. that's like its main main mechanism. I mean, really, that's what you know, that's what it is for, racehorses. Mm-hmm. So I think I think that's the real benefit. Like if you're a fighter or something, that's that's really the stairway to take. But why do you think certain steroids react differently in, in different people? I mean, that's a good question. Uh, it definitely has to do with some kind of genetic predisposition. I mean, because you, you take it like you can have women that 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 take a little bit of gear and then all of a sudden they like facially they turn crazily into a man and then another one that that um takes the same thing and yeah they just they just get the benefit you know they become more muscular and their face yeah. doesn't at all yeah you know? absolutely so it's definitely it definitely has to do with some kind of genetic factor genetic polymorphism or something that's turning on certain uh, genes yeah, it's unbelievable. You know, I've had friends that absolutely love Anadrol. Absolutely love Anadrol. Like, it's my, oh, it's my favorite drug. And I've used Anadrol and I've gotten good results, but not great. I get better results from Debol. Or yeah. I get better, I get the best results from Tyranibal. Yeah, I like Tyranibal, yeah. But, but yeah, I, no, I think it's, it's really individual for sure. Yeah, definitely. The only thing, testosterone seems to be testosterone, no matter what. Like, you know, everybody kind of, and then trend, I've never heard anybody having a like not getting good results from trend. Yeah, just going crazy. Yeah, 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 right, right, right. But yeah. uh, other than that, I've heard guys like not liking Decker or not liking EQ yeah. or not liking certain oral, you know, uh, not to liking a certain, uh, you know. Yeah, it gives them anxiety. I've heard that. Yeah, that Decker don't give me anxiety. No, not me and, either. And it's all dose related, like the sleeping problem from trend where people say they can't sleep, that's dose related for me. Um, the only time I get, uh, the cough is when I use acetate and I rarely I've use acetate. Never, I've never, I've had the cough maybe one time in my entire life. Yeah. The only time I get it is when I use acetate and antate. I never, I never trend and antate. I never got. And then of course there's that tri trend, which. Oh, I, heck. I, yeah. I just don't recommend the tri trend. Uh, I always got better results from an antate or acetate. Because I just feel like when you start like mixing and matching, you don't know what were what's working, you don't know what's not working. You know what I mean? Well, there's, hexyl, never... there's hexyl carbonate too. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Try trend is the the that's acetate. The, and it, yeah, that's and all X. three of them. Yeah. Have you ever tried that? No, never. So I've tried that several times, and it made me very strong, but I didn't get the the lean. My guess, my guess is it's probably just one of the three. Yeah, you're probably right. You're probably right. Yeah, yeah. And it's probably uh, the enantate or the acetate because the the hexyl carbonate is very expensive. Is it really? Yeah. Yeah, very very expensive. So if I just use just usually I prefer enantate because you just hit yourself twice a week. Yeah, and, and you could the, the the hex the hex is even even longer. Really? Yeah, it's three weeks. I think it's a half life. Wow. So yeah, yeah, I just hit myself twice a week with the with the trend enantate. And that's it. Yeah, I get the night sweats. I get stronger. I get leaner. You know, and you know, uh, I, to me, you know, and people always want to jump on the the fast acting gear because they think it's going to make them leaner, faster. And it's like nah, it's you, you're splitting hairs at that point. I agree. And yeah. am I, so like I said, if you're competing and you need to split those hairs, and when every little bit counts, that's a different story. But if you just want to, like, you know, you're going to the beach for the summer or summer. Or, you know, right than a house down the Jersey Shore, then it's it's just there's no reason to split the hairs, you know. Yeah, you no, do, I agree. you know, and uh, and, and you'll be fine. But other than that, that's but and there's also no way to figure out why this trend cough, right? Yeah, they have no idea. They have no idea why the trend, and they have no idea why it's mostly just the acetate that yeah. causes the trend cough, and because that for me. That's what I had the first time I used that today. I was coughing my asshole. I was like, like I've, turning I've only red. I've had it once or twice in my entire life. Really? And then it went, when an antate, never. Like, but an antate, the most that happens is I feel like I'm going to have that trend cough, but then it goes away. 
Yeah, I've I've only had it like yeah, occasionally, and and it's never. I think I've had the cough once, and the other I've had felt like tightness, but yeah, yeah. One last question, and I'm gonna let you go, Danny. What do you tell the guys or girl? Not so much girls, but the guys that want to do a cycle, but they're afraid. They just want to do you know like ten milligrams of Anavar, and they want they only want to do two hundred fifty milligrams of testosterone or. You know, they want to, you no, know, I tell them not to do it. Yeah, it's, you're wasting your time. And I tell yeah. them that too. Yeah. Tell them not to do it. And then have, I had a friend recently who told me that he's doing the gel. And I'm like, dude, the yeah. gel is designed for seven year old men. It's designed to bring your level up to 500 NG per DL. Your levels before you start taking that gel were probably higher than they are when you took the gel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no the point. Gel- the gel too, I'm not crazy about only because you really can't control what's being absorbed and what's not. You, it's only designed to bring your levels to 500. That's, that's it. it. That's uh, it. Because, you, uh, okay. you know, I, I'm thinking it's a gel. You rub it on your skin. You know, you don't know what's rubbing on the sheets, what's rubbing on your clothes. You don't know how much you're absorbing, how much you're not absorbing. And what if you have to adjust it, you know? like Well, uh, yeah, they, they don't. They just give you that. And if your levels don't go high enough... And they just give you the injection. They don't even they don't even mess with the dosage of that gel. Yeah, I just would rather go over to the dosage. You know exactly how many milligrams. And like, you know, not everybody responds the same way to certain milligrams. You could put, you know, use 100 milligrams a week and you, you might need more to go to 500. You might need less. You know, everybody's a little different. And But you could adjust it properly with an injection. So why, why just, why dick around with the gel? You know what I mean? Yeah, and I mean, most people want their levels above 500. They, they want your levels. Yeah. Like- Around a thousand, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I feel like a thousand is like a good, good. Place. Yeah, for for putting muscle on. Yeah, there's no question. Absolutely, you know. Yeah, but uh, we'll see. All right, dude. I uh, appreciate you coming on. Yeah. When uh, tomorrow night right. it will yeah. be me, me, you, Arns, Big Daddy Bo, Phil Klahar will be the special, the special mm-hmm. guest over at MD. And I told Carlos that you know if you're feeling up to it, come on. You know, we could you could talk about what happened, and um, I don't know if he will. I just told him, you know, if you're feeling up to it, I don't know if he's, you know, have you know, in pain. I don't know what he's going through. I know he's probably he might not even want to come on just because he 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 knows he's going to have to talk about. It. He might not want to talk about it right away. Yeah. You know, he might be like, ah, not yet, not yet. You know, which is totally understandable. You know, that's got to suck. He's a young guy who's ready to make his pro debut. Everybody was waiting. Everybody was talking about him. And then shit yeah. happens, you know. But you know what? I told him, man, it'll all work out. You'll do a, a show fucking three months from now. And Yeah, I think, I think honestly, it's probably a smarter decision. that If he's not going to be at his best, it's smarter to just back out and, and yeah. do something else, you know. Yeah, I think he's, yeah. yeah, plus also, you know, the expectations for him are so high. You know, right. pe- people are comparing him to like, you know, Nick Walker or, or, or uh, what's his name? Lunsford, you know, everybody's thinking, you know, and if he can't live up to that, that first show, people are going to, you know, the shit talking that's going to happen. Yeah. And so on and so forth. So I kind of understand, you know, it's like, you know, bodybuilding is physical, but psychologically you have to be, you have to be very strong too. You can't, you know, it's not easy, especially when you're at that level and you can't even look at your phone. I mean, you know, yeah. constant negative feedback. And I'm mm-hmm. sure plenty of positive stuff too, but constant negative feedback too. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Blind, yeah. Uh, Danny, I appreciate it, man. Thank you very much, brother. And uh, I will see you on Wednesday night. And then, mm-hmm. and then after that, yeah, tomorrow. And then do we have another Wednesday night? Yeah, then we have one more Wednesday night before do. the New York Pro. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I'm going to talk to MD. Maybe we could, maybe we'll skip that week. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Yeah. All right. All right, brother. I'll talk to you later. Cool. Later, bro.